Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam I've been a cardiologist for more than 40 years uh, here in the Houston area the feature presentation is uh, cardiac cycle so we're going to look at one cardiac cycle as what happens inside the heart in terms of its uh, various uh, functions so first we're going to look at the anatomy of the heart next we're going to look at uh, the structure of the heart electrical activation of the heart propagation of impulses through the heart chambers i'm talking about the electrical impulses then heart has what is called the all or none phenomenon that means if one segment of the atrium is activated both the atria squeeze at the same time or they are electrically activated or depolarized and they squeeze at the same time similarly the ventricles once they are activated they function as uh, one unit and they squeeze at the same time the electrical impulses travels at the same time then we have the mechanical contraction of the heart muscle the atria or the ventricles which pump blood forward and finally we have hemodynamics in order for the blood to be pumped from one part to other part of the body we has to have a pressure difference so when the heart chamber squeezes it increases the pressure in that particular chamber for example if the left atrium squeezes it increases the left atrial pressure which opens the mitral valve and pumps the blood into the left ventricular cavity so that's the basic principle and in order to prevent the backflow of blood during contractions we have these valves namely the tricuspid the mitral pulmonic and the aortic valves these valves are functioning like one way valves so they allow the blood to come from for example right atrium to the right ventricle but it won't allow the blood to leak into the right atrium unless there is a dysfunction of the tricuspid valve or the mitral valve or whichever valve we are talking about so that's one important thing the blood basically travels from the right side of the heart into the pulmonary artery and into the lungs where it is oxygenated and returned to the left atrium through the pulmonary veins from there from the ventricle it is pumped into the rest of the body the oxygenated blood so let us look at one cardiac cycle so we're going to start off with the electrical system of the heart at the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium we have a specialized myo epithelial cells known as the sinus node it's a small bundle of cells which has the ability you can follow my arrow here which has the ability to produce spontaneous electrical impulse once the sinus node produces an impulse it is conducted through these uh, special fibers these are the ones which conduct the electricity from the sinus node into the both right and the left atria so that both the right and the left atria are activated electrically simultaneously which is going to be followed by mechanical squeezing of the atria and we have the av node here which is av node here which is very important because av node not only helps to conduct the impulse from the atria but it also delays the impulse why do we need the av av node to delay the impulse ha ah, here's a good question you see the atria takes some time to completely empty the blood into the ventricles so during that time we don't want the ventricles to be starting to squeeze so the av node puts in a delay like 200 milliseconds that allows time for the blood to get into the ventricles from the atria and when that is completed we have the main bundle of his and the right and the left uh, perkin bundle branches and the perkinja systems which activate both the right and the left ventricles simultaneously so followed by the electrical activation of the ventricles we get the mechanical squeezing of the ventricles or contraction which leads to the forward blood flow into the pulmonary artery and into the main aorta so let's look at uh, from let's put the whole thing together now so first we have the electrical system of the heart and this is how the electrical system is reflected on the electrocardiogram the atrial activation of the 
heart is reflected by the P wave. The mechanical construction, mechanical contraction of the atria doesn't begin immediately after the P wave because there is some delay like 40 milliseconds before the mechanical contraction of the atria occurs. Then the PR interval is the delay I was talking about in the AV node so that it allows time for the atria to empty the blood into the respective ventricles. Then we have the QRS complex which represents the electrical activation of the right and the left ventricles. So the QRS complex is a composite reflection of the activation of the right and the left ventricles. The predominant is of course the left ventricle where the impulse travels from the right shoulder down to the left side. That's why we get a very strong positive deflection known as R wave. The QRS complex consists of three components namely the Q, R and S. The Q wave is due to the septal activation which occurs from right to left and hence in the anterior chest leads we may see a Q, a negative deflection. Then when a strong impulse travels forward we get a strong R wave. That is followed by an S wave which is a reflection of the impulse going from the front of the heart muscle to the back of the heart muscle which produces the S wave. Then we have an isoelectric period during which time uh, the ST segment is uh, recorded. The T wave is represented by the relaxation of the ventricles. It's mainly the ventricles. So this is a, a quick review of the electrical system, the electrical activation of the heart and the mechanical contraction of the heart in response to the electrical activation. Even though the ventricular contraction starts at the beginning of the Q wave, the mechanical contraction of the ventricle may take 40 to 60 milliseconds because that's how much time it takes for the entire ventricles to be activated to produce the contraction of the ventricles. So that's about the electrical activity, the mechanical contraction of the ventricles and I want to touch upon one more thing and that is the hemodynamics. That is the pressures within the heart chambers. For blood to move from one point to another point, there has, there has to be a pressure difference. So if you want the blood to move from the right atrium into the right ventricle, the pressure in the right atrium has to be higher than the left ventricular diastolic pressure at which time it pushes open the tricuspid valve and pushes the blood into the right ventricle. Similarly, we have the same process on the left. So hemodynamic is something that measures the pressures in various heart chambers which allows for the forward flow of the blood. And as you can see, we have these heart valves which prevent the blood from backing up during contraction of the ventricles. If these valves are not there, when the ventricles contract, the blood can not only go into the pulmonary artery, but it could also go back into the atrium, which is uh, futile because it's not serving the purpose. So the valves not only help to move the blood in one direction, they also prevent the leak of blood during ventricular contractions. And one more point which I would like to just touch upon, that is the oxygen saturation in various uh, chambers. I have already done that in my previous video. You can watch that one. Thank you so much for watching this uh, basic cardiology presentation. We have more than 250 videos on cardiology education on our YouTube channel. Please, please do watch them and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next presentation. Thank you so much.